Hey, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about the narcissistic boyfriend or husband. So all these traits may not apply to your husband or boyfriend, or all of them might apply. So let me know what you think in the comment section. So one way you can spot a narcissistic boyfriend or husband is that he will love bomb you. Love bomb is in the um, first phases of a relationship when the person is being really nice. Now this narcissistic manipulative person, they might I do extra than other things to try to get the relationship going fast, like buy you a lot of flowers, take you out. They want to know all about your life so they can determine what it is you want. You you just you say something about going to a movie, then they're there with the movie. They show up with movie perfume and they're doing all this kind of stuff, taking you out on the town and you, telling you how great you are and how he's had other people around, but none have been like you and you're such a breath of fresh air and so you're eating this all up because you might have just come out of a bad relationship you know you haven't had uh this good life that this narcissist is showing you so you find yourself allowing this relationship to move um and go you know quicker than you might have went with some other relationships so but then something uh decides something changes you know you may start noticing that your uh narcissistic husband boyfriend is not so nice anymore you know he he's starting to say little snide com comments or putting you down and things of that nature you know something is changing so one way that you can spot this narcissist uh, husband is he self-important meaning that he feels that he's the prize he might say things to you like oh you're lucky to have him uh, you've not had anyone as good as him you know you should be thrilled that he allows you to be a part of his in his life because he's so important and you should realize that you got a good thing here and you shouldn't want to mess that up you know another thing that he might uh, feel is is that He's smarter than women. You might notice that he'll say things like, um, a woman can never teach me anything. You know, I can't learn anything from a woman because, you know, men are smarter than women. You know, they'll say this kind of things. You'll notice that they try to put others down, even if, if it's other women or other people that he may know. It's always about him being smarter than other people. Uh, one uh, narcissist that I that I experienced before, not a, not a boyfriend, not a husband or anything, I would uh, hear this person like in conversation say to people do you do you know for instance the name um do you know i'm jim jackson you talking to jim jackson you know talking to himself in the third person and i used to think is this person for real and then you notice yeah this person is for real just very full of himself all right, so um, the narcissist also wants you to be their cheerleader. You know, they think great about themselves. They need you to be in their corner, not talking about yourself. They want you to play yourself down, not feel good about yourself, but they want you talking about, oh, Jim Jackson is so great. He does this. He provides for his home. He's so great in business. Oh, so smart. They want you to always to sing their praises. They want you to buy into this uh, this myth that they have about themselves. All right. Another thing is that the narcissistic boyfriend or husband is preoccupied with um, with beauty. This might not apply to all. Uh, you may hear some, some may be in the gym a lot or, uh, you know, really um, caring about the body or, or hearing about their face saying, you know, how great they look, you know, oh, you should be telling the, uh, the wife or the girlfriend, oh, it's a good thing you're with me, you know, look how good I am, you got to prove yourself, you got to do S, Y, and Z, I can have anybody I want, look at, look at this, uh, the body, or look at the face, you know, these are things that they'll, they might say, um, they may tell, if this person is successful, uh, you know, he may go on and on about t telling you how great he is at business, uh, the deals that he won, the promotions that he got, you know, you find yourself constantly listening to maybe how smart he is, you know, um, and you, you don't really get a chance to say anything about you. You might be waiting to interject and say how your day is, but it's not really going to get to your day. If he does mention your day, it's more just asking you how about your day just so he could seem that he's a caring person because he's really not, you know, it's just like, just so you can think that I care, you know, but then as soon as you say, oh, my day was okay, and you don't really get to go in, then all of a sudden he's in telling you about 
how other uh, women are maybe flirting with him, you know, and um, just how good he, he looks and he can't go anywhere. And he not really, he's not caring if you're getting jealous by the things he's saying about how women are flirting with him every time he goes somewhere. He's at Starbucks and, he, and women are, you know, falling all over him and can't wait to buy, buy his Starbucks drinks for him. He doesn't care how you think about it. It's just that you, you just have to sit and suffer and listen to these long conversations about how just how great he is also you'll notice that he's preoccupied about what others think the reason why this man if he is the your husband and not the boyfriend the reason uh, a lot of times they want to get married so they can seem normal it's very important to them what other people think so um in this society it's still very important that you're married you know so they want to uh go ahead and get married so they can fit in with their business partners or they can if their other friends are getting married they don't want to be the only one that's left out so then they want want to find them someone to marry and when they marry they're marrying to see what the other person can do for them um, does this woman um, does she possibly come from money maybe the narcissist can try to uh, move up in um, social status and get money and fame and notoriety because of the wife or is this wife um, very good looking? You know, maybe he can take her around and his um, brag to friends and he knows his friends will be jealous because he has a good, good looking, shapely wife. You know, what can he get out of this person? Or is this wife someone that's going to uh, do what he do, what he says and not question him? You know, can he have someone that he can can control? It's always about what the other person can do to serve that narcissist. It's not about love. Narcissists they don't know how to love. It's all about gaining whatever they need to gain to feel good about themselves. Also, um, the uh, narcissist boyfriend or husband, they need to constantly be admired or acknowledged. What I used to say when, when I was younger was people would say, do you need a hero cookie? We would say that to other people. If you could see people were constantly trying to get pats on the back, it's like here, well, here's your hero cookie. You did a great job. We noticed you. Here's a cookie. Now shut up about it. You know, this is how that narcissist is. They, um, He'll constantly talk of, maybe remind you of the things that he's done for you in the past, you know, if he doesn't feel that you're giving him enough narcissistic supply, meaning giving him the pass on the back or all the attention he may need. He'll be like, oh, well, remember, you know, I bought you this for your birthday or remember I took you here and I, I took you, I took you there and I took out the trash and I babysit it. I babysat my own kid, you know, so things that he should be doing, you know, he wants these extra pass on the back. And I'm not saying it's not important to acknowledge people and to say thank you. Of course it is. But with the narcissistic husband or boyfriend, he's going overboard, constantly looking for you to feed um, to feed that ego and wanting always for you to realize that, hey, you know, you you be grateful. You, you, you acknowledge how wonderful I am. I do all this for you and don't you ever forget it. All right. They also have the um, the need to, um, if they're a spiritual man, I don't want to forget this. If it's a religious man, he may want you to constantly say, you know, to acknowledge how great he is with his biblical knowledge to the point that you don't, maybe you, maybe he doesn't encourage you to read your Bible much because he wants you to sit down and he only wants you to read the scripture. Which is he wants you to read. He wants you to. Ask, he only wants you to ask, um, ask him all the questions. He wants to be the one to explain and interpret everything out the Bible, as if you don't have a relationship with God yourself. Because he wants to be able to tell you, that, no, this means that. This means this, and this means I'm your husband. So you need to do X, Y, and Z. You need to obey me. He wants to be the only one that's filtering your mind with such things. Also, uh, the narcissistic husband or boyfriend can be very entitled. Entitled meaning that um, they may feel that they sex whenever they want it, even if you're sick. Um, this person may not care at all. It's like whatever you're sick, he may feel like I want it anyway. And because you're his wife or girlfriend, that you should be willing to do it. He doesn't care what's going on with you. You might be cramping. Uh, anything could be going on. He doesn't care. Uh, the same way... Um, 
um, that anything that's that's yours, he feels that he has a right to it. He's entitled to your passwords. Uh, he wants to be able to go on your Facebook, see who all your friends is. Like whatever um, you have that's personal to yours, it's like he doesn't care. It's like he want he wants that, and you should if you love him according to him, you should give him the passwords to your phones and let him know um, everything that's going in going on you know in your life. He may even be the type of person to um, go into your um, into your life with your friends and say, oh, this isn't a good friend. You shouldn't be around this friend or may try to get you away from your family and have you stop seeing family and friends, telling you that he's the only one who... Um, Who's going, who really loves you and takes care of you. And he may even start to smear your family and friends saying, well, they don't love you as much and they don't care for you as much. And you're just, um, you're, you're just bound, bound to him. And he wants to keep you away from others. Maybe so others won't tell you, Hey, something's wrong with this. He's being controlling. He's being abusive. He wants you um, to himself or wants to control who you're around. You may no notice that he feels entitled to tell you what to do about your dress. Like, for instance, um, he may say, oh, where I don't want you to wear this clothes. You have to wear this type of shirt. You have, I only like you in this color, so you have to wear that. Oh, you have to wear makeup or, oh, you can't wear makeup. Oh, you can wear earrings. You can't wear earrings. Um, oh, you can... Um, dye your hair this color but you can't dye it this color oh I, I don't want you in flats or I don't want you in heels it's like and I understand in any relationship there's a give and take but this one is just totally um, making the woman feel like a child there's no say so you know you can get your eyebrows arched but you can't get your eyebrows arched you know these may be different things that different narcissists may um you know, require of the person that they love. They also may snoop, snoop around. Like you may, um, the, the wife, the girlfriend may have a diary. The narcissist is going through diaries, reading to see what your personal thoughts are, you know, just to be nosy and also to find things to use against you in the time of an argument. You know, it just feels like the boundaries you set. Boundaries meaning what you will accept and what you won't accept. This is me. This is you. You know, you stay over this, th that far, I'm over here. Things of that nature. But the narcissists, they don't care. You over here and you say, don't come this close, they this close. You know, they, they, they don't care. They, you know, they, they don't care. But you can't do the same things to them. But that's how that's how they'll do. Uh, your narcissist, the husband or boyfriend, lacks empathy, uh, meaning that he do, he doesn't um, care about care about your feelings. You know, may say um, things to you that you've asked him not to say. Do things to you you've asked not to do. You know, like I said, um, it, it, you know, if he expects you to do the cooking, the cleaning, uh, taking care of the kids, if you're sick, you know, he may tell you, no, you're not sick at all. You know, you're just making too much of it. Or, you know, get back to um, cleaning, get back to doing what I need you to do, get back to, um, if, if you're his personal assistant at, at work, get back to, to the job and do what I need you to do. You're faking, you know, that's not real because they, if they feel as if it's not them, it didn't happen. So you can um, hurt your toe and be in pain and they'll be like, oh no, you didn't hurt your toe. You just, you know, you didn't hurt yourself. You, you acting like you got a sprained ankle just to get back, you know, just to get attention from me. You, you know, you're not. So they're like just totally discrediting you. No empathy at all. You could be um, in labor pains and then they're telling you, you know, stop all that noise and screaming and hollering. It's not that bad. I mean, why are you doing all that? Would you stop? You you know, you like, I'm pregnant, you know, about to go into labor and pain, and this person is telling me I'm not really in pain, and to shut up, it's not that serious, you know, or you may have, uh, you may have had a lot of babies for this person, and you may be on baby number four, and then uh, you, you just had the baby, and he's telling you to hurry up and get healed, because you got to go back to work, because it's time for you to um, make some money, because he paying 50% of the bills, you paying 50, and he, he's not able or unwilling to pay 100% of the bills, even though you're having all of his babies, so he's making you, you're not even fully well uh, from the birth, and he's making you hurry up and get back to work so you can bring him that money so he can, um, you know, 
do do whatever it is he's doing because God forbid that he's going to take care of you a hundred percent. And again, that's not all narcissists. Some narcissists, you know, um, have a situation where they may pay all the bills and the wife doesn't work at all. Uh, the, the narcissist will also be, um, exploits his family. For instance, if he has children, he may believe that the children should be seen and not heard. He may make the children to do um, all of the house chores ar around the house where the narcissist is barely helping out or not helping, you know, or not helping at all. The children are expected to do everything along with the wife or the girlfriend. She may be treated as a slave too. Not only does um, he, he might require her to fix the food, wash the dishes, serve him his food, bring him his water cut up his meat, you know, go out and get his uh, clothes from the dry cleaner. Then he may also expect her to uh, work at his, his business and she's doing all this. So you, you will find that you're giving a lot to this narcissist and the narcissist is not giving you anything because sometimes in their mind, they feel, well, maybe in the beginning when they were love bombing you, taking you on dates and doing everything that, Hey, you know, that that was it. They feel like, Hey, I got you a house or you have a car. I got you and that's it. So I got you this house and car. So for the rest of your life, girlfriend or wife, you're going to do everything else. Cause I did two or three good things for you. You know, when we first met, but Hey, 20, 30 years down the line, you got to repay me for those little few things. I did those little sprinkles, sprinkles I gave you. And then they, they yeah. So it's never even, they want you to constantly give. Even uh, with the with with, with the uh, ch with the children, they may um, may not feel they may not spend a lot of time with the kids. They may feel that it's the the wife's the woman's duty to take care of the kids. And uh, even if, if they have the the kids, it'll be on their their time, you know, because they want to be involved. You know, if the wife says, "Hey, honey, can you take the kids out to do this?" Just to spite the wife, he may say no. But you know, but you may find that he will gravitate to the kids. It's Especially if that child has some unique quality that the um, narcissist can get public um, praise for. Like if the kid is very smart and winning awards or very athletic, the narcissist can, you know, get pats on the back by people saying, oh man, you I see your kid, he's playing basketball, he's doing this. Then the narcissist is like, yeah, that's my kid. Even though the narcissist probably was never really around, didn't spend much time with the kid, but they'll be there like, yeah, that's my kid, that's my boy, taught him everything he knows, you know stuff stuff like that uh one thing I think about with the with the uh, with the wife that's married to the narcissist is the song by Mary J. Blige, "Not Gonna Cry." You know, she was like, "Was your lover and your secretary working every day of the week? Was at the job when no one else was there, helping you get on your feet? You eleven years of sacrifice, something like that. I, I know I don't sing, but it just reminded me." It reminded me of that. It's like the, the character in the in the in the film was doing all kind of stuff, bending over backwards, you know, put her career on the back burner to help the narcissist get on his feet, get his business going, and she did all this for him. You know, he was even counting them um, times they were having sex. Then he ended up leaving her for the secretary for somebody who wasn't even doing bending over backwards. For him, but he left the wife that was doing everything, raising his kids, but he didn't care. He felt entitled that he felt that she was married to him. So she should have been doing all this, even though she put her life, her career aspirations on the back burner, but he didn't care. He profited. All right. So another thing is, uh, they envy people. Uh, they want to, they, they may feel that, uh, the wife, is envious of uh, his, his success or envious of his um, how other women see him and um, other women want him. He feels that the wife is just, you know, too jealous and she needs to get over it. But truly, this narcissistic husband, boyfriend may be out um, in the streets flirting with other people. He may even flirt in front of um, the wife's face. But then he's wondering why she, she shouldn't be so jealous. She shouldn't uh, do such things. But he's throwing it in, right in her face and, you know, but he, he doesn't care because he, he lacks the envy. He may even be jealous of her if she's trying to get her career together he may try to sabotage her career make her late for appointments if someone calls um calls their home for her regarding business he may not give her the message he may do those things because if he's taking care of all the bills he may want to continue to put make her 
put her under his feet, meaning he doesn't want her to get a job, save up any money, because she may get the idea to leave him. Or, you know, if he, if she, if they both work, he probably doesn't want her to do better, because he wants the friends and the church members and other people to see how much, you know, smarter and wiser he is. He can't have his wife outshining him. She definitely can't do better than him, so he'll do whatever he can to sabotage her, just like an enemy would. You know, if an enemy has a chance to do you wrong, then a lot of times they will do it. This is what that narcissist are. This is what I mean by they don't love, you know, they, they're only out for self. And if you are doing better than them, they're going to try to crush you as an, as an enemy. Another thing about them, they can be um, very arrogant and vengeful. You know, uh, you'll notice in arguments where it's like they can't do any wrong. It's always it's always the wife, the girlfriend's fault, you know, because that narcissist, if you try to prove them wrong, then you're going to get all hell's going to come out. You'll notice that person, they'll shame you. They'll embarrass you. A, a narcissist male who I saw with his girlfriend one time, they had just come from the grocery store and apparently, let's say she had a hundred dollars she was supposed to spend on food well she spent a certain amount of it and then maybe like ten dollars wasn't accounted for on the receipts and several times he made her recount that money in front of everybody that was there and I remember I was um, a younger person at the time and everybody who was just in the living room was just looking like Oh my God. And she kept explaining to him, no, I don't know where that other receipt is, but I promise I spent all of it on food. This was her money. And he kept her, no, recounting. You recounted. Where's the receipts? Go in your purse. He um, emptied out her purse, you know, was making her recount everything. You know, just totally trying to embarrass her and also trying to get everyone to see how, how you know, how big and bad he was and how under, um, how under his control that she was. And she was nervous and it seemed like the ner the more nervous she got, the more he felt empowered by that. Like he was pulling her strings like a puppet master, like, yeah, I got you. Yeah, I'm, you're, you're weak and, you know, I'm strong. It's like that with narcissists. They think that the people, that the ones that they... Um, target their victims or the ones that they're married to it is like they they the narcissist feels superior to that person and feels that it's okay to punish this person because this person keeps coming back for the abuse they allow me to abuse them uh the narcissist may even start to love bomb you again they may go off on you insult you call you crazy say you're stupid and then they'll do something good bring you some flowers or say something nice and you may start to think that the relationship is turning that's why people stay they think oh, well oh it's getting good then it goes back bad then it's good then it's bad and then the um um, the woman is always sitting there waiting, thinking that, oh, if only we can stay at the good times, maybe it'll happen. But you will see with the narcissist, you're never going to stay at the good times. It's always just going to, the bad is always going to keep coming because this is just who that person is. It's like we have to believe people when they show us who they are. You know, that, that's how it is with narcissists or, or any manipulative person, actually. Um, there, so a narcissist, um, the husband, he can be very critical seeing, um, things about a person's weight, you know, or, oh, you're, you're too big or, oh, you're too skinny or, um, why are you wearing your hair like this? Why are you wearing this kind of clothes? Or, oh, oh, so-and-so cooks better than you. They may start comparing you to other people. Oh, so-and-so has a better body than you. Oh, so-and-so looks better because they're wearing their makeup this type of way. Or so-and-so is smarter because they're going, they're, um, taking up this class or they're reading this book and you don't do that kind of stuff oh I don't know why you're not further ahead oh I, I don't know why you're not a better mom you know I don't know why uh you know you don't take better care of our kids you know that you know why aren't you a better wife you know so-and-so's wife does this and rubs his back so-and-so's wife uh she goes out and gets a second job so she can contribute more to the household they're always comparing you also they'll try to make you feel guilty Let's say, for instance, if this person, um, if they are providing totally for you, they'll try, they'll remind you and say, well, remember, I got you, you were living in a project, so you were living in the trailer parks, I brought you out of that, you know, and then they can also get evil with it, you know, I'll send you back 
to that. You know, um, I remember what Stevie J told Jocelyn, and I'm not saying he's a narcissist, but it, it, it that that what he did re, reminded me of a narcissist. He kept promising to send her back to the pole, to the strip club where he got her from. So yeah, they'll do stuff like that. Like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm they want to one up you. Like, hey, I'm better than you, and because of because of me, you know, you're doing better. So don't you forget that, because I can send you back to the gutter, because that's where I got you from. So you should be happy, because I took you out that gutter stuff like that you'll notice they also play the victim to make you feel bad saying well i always do this for you and now i want you to work two jobs and you won't do it oh now i'm out of work and you know i can't find work in my field and i want you to pay all the bills and i don't want to find work outside of my field but you should take care of me even if you leave them for whatever reason um, if this person is not working at the time, the narcissist, he might tell you, oh, you should still be paying bills over here where I'm at. And then uh, he may even use the smear campaign telling people, oh, she was with me when I had this and now I don't have it. You know, now she's gone. You know, he doesn't say, you know, she's gone because of uh, cheating because, you know, they like to cheat. They find themselves uh, so 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 great and irresistible that they feel that they want to go out and they get bored quick. So they want to go out and try other stuff. So they won't tell the part that maybe they've been cheating or addicted to porn or beating you or whatever. But they'll just say, oh, she only left me because of that one reason I'm down. It's always the victim. And you may think back at the beginning of the relationship, a red flag was he probably was telling you how other women he was so giving and so nourishing and helping them succeed in their life but they wouldn't do the same and took advantage you know he's always the victim in any uh, type of relationship he'll also um, accuse you you know if he's out cheating on you probably brought you a disease home because he feels that um, he knows people. He's a great judge of character and he wouldn't be with anyone with an STD. He ends up bringing a girlfriend or wife an STD, not con not concerned about her, her, her care and feels that she shouldn't want to be protected when she's having sex with him, even though he's out in the street screwing anybody he can. You know, he feels uh, this same person would end up accusing the girlfriend and her husband of doing the cheating when it's actually him that's doing the uh, the cheating. Uh, some of the insults you may find, and um, even with um, with spiritual male narcissists, they may say things to the wife and say, oh, you look like a whore um, in that outfit. Oh, you're not submissive. But they won't talk about how the Bible also says that the um, husband and the wife should be submissive to others. They only pull out the scriptures that benefit them, talking about, oh, but well, you need to do what I do, you know. But but if they want you to be submissive, but they don't want to be loving, kind, and full of the, the um, fruits of the spirit as the Bible talk about you know, patient and gentle, you know, they're harsh, they're critical, you know, they're uh, jealous, uh, they're vengeful, you know, they, they want, they, they get high when they can manipulate you and see you crying in tears, they love that, or if they can get you um, to get out of control emotionally, screaming and hollering and throwing things, they love that because they feel they have power over you, none of that's in the Bible, but this person will do those things, but then expect you to just do what they want you to do and talk about submission because that's a control tactic even though I agree that there should be roles in the relationships I believe that with the Bible I don't have a problem with that but my problem is is when people try to take it out of context and use submission as a as a way to control a person treating a person as a child while they're abusing someone you know trying to get you to say submit uh, he may do the same thing to his children, telling them to um, that they should submit. Oh, the Bible says you need to obey your parents, but he won't tell them. The Bible also says that the um, father should not um, make 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 their cheer children be rageful basically they shouldn't cause their children to be full of rage and full of hate they shouldn't do evil things to the children but the father you know the way he may exploit the kids is that he may take toys back that he bought for them a clothes that if they make him mad he'll take his clothes and take his money back as a way to punish he doesn't say you know he what does the bible say about that but you will never know because he won't ever tell you that he'll just say tell the children oh that they should be submissive 
um, to, to, to the parents. He'll also probably try to turn the kids against the mother, you know, telling them, oh, your mother doesn't do me right. Oh, your mother doesn't cook the food how I like it. Oh, your mother isn't a good mom to you all. You know, he may try to turn the kids against the mom, but that's not biblical, a biblical thing to do either. But he won't mention that. It's just all the ways that how the Bible can benefit him in his own agenda. Uh, there's also with the narcissistic husband, uh, boyfriend, the name calling, calling bitches, whores and things of that nature. He can also be, um, abusive physically, pinching, pushing, shoving, you know, um, smacking. He may do it in front of other people as well. He might only do it in private. Uh, the religious one, I would say, um, some, a lot of times does it in private so other people can't see it because to the church home, the, the church people, uh, probably see him as this good, holy man. And he's nice to the wife out in public. Um, and I find this with a lot of narcissists. Sometimes they're nice to the woman in public, but then they're horrible to her in private. So people aren't really seeing what's going on. So there's the sexual abuse, maybe forcing sex upon her or actually raping her if she doesn't want to have sex. The emotional abuse, calling her stupid, saying her friends are dumb, her family is dumb, saying that she should be better, constantly uh, criticizing her on everything. You know, the, and then the worst part of it is if you have a narcissistic uh, spouse, I mean, husband or boyfriend who's abusing drugs because a drug addict, they can, uh, it's, they can have traits that's similar to a narcissist anyway because of the drugs, but that doesn't mean they're necessarily a narcissist, just meaning the drugs cause them to have some of the traits. But you combine uh, a person who is actually a narcissist with substance abuse, and then that's even, you know, that's even a worse thing there. So as far as... Uh, what do you do? You know, if you have this person that's a narcissist, the, um, who is it? The Jekyll, Mr. Hyde in the public a lot wants to be seen like this great person, this great family man. He's doing all these kind of things, but then in private, he's a living, mo you know, he's a living monster. And as I say, again, some of them are actually monsters in public too, beating a woman up in public, you know, um, uh, embarrassing her in public but it's still something that he wants to be seen as like oh he's a great cook so you know he's adding to his family though even though everybody know he's whooping her ass but he's he's still um showing his good qualities before the world so people can still think that he's such such a great catch the issues with leaving the uh the, the narcissist uh, I'm not going to say that it's going to be easy, especially if there's abuse, but there's things that people can do. There's uh, shelters for victims of domestic violence who will take in kids as well as take in the mother. Sometimes you may have to um, cut off family and friends who actually are supporters of the narcissist, meaning they believe if you leave, they'll tell you uh, where he's gone, you know, so you have to make sure that, uh, you know, that maybe you cut them off. Uh, a woman may take a take her leave in a few times before she actually does get away from this person. Uh, if you go, if you have kids, it can be very messy. They try to turn the kids against you. Uh, they go to the courts and they lie and uh, say all types of horrible things. And you have to, you know, you have to deal with it that, you know, have to deal with that aspect of it. But when that happens, the best things to do is to try to meet the person at a neutral place, at a McDonald's to pick up the kid, you know, only have Having conversations about um, the kid, not talking about your personal life, you know, making sure everything is, this is the kid, this is the day you pick them up, this is the time, you know, that you come in, you know, that you get your child. Even they will try to be late, but you plan if you're out at McDonald's and you know that person, is, the um, narcissist is going to come late, make a day of it. Is there something else in the area you can do while you're waiting on this narcissist and then continue to control your emotions when he gets there late? He wants to see you up upset, out of control, screaming and hollering, why are you late? Why didn't you pick up? Expect this person to be an hour late and then you go on and you do what you have to do. When he texts you, you give him the kid with no emotions on your face. That's the thing. With narcissists, you have to have that poker face, give them no emotions. He, oh, here's your child. Okay. And you leave, not acknowledging the being late, anything like that. If you can with the courts, address it with them, but not with that individual. And then you, you move on. But so, yeah, but there's things you can do. There's restraining orders, things like that, but it's not going to be easy. If you don't have kids with the person, it makes it a bit easier, especially um, if you don't have kids and there's no violence. So 
Uh, this is the end of this talk. If you liked, uh, you know, what I had to say, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want more of this content, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Leave me your comments. I'd like to know what you think. I'm also going to do um, the narcissistic wife or girlfriend. So I, it's not that I'm getting on the men, but I plan to do it all um, to cover that as well. Thank you. Bye.